about the success it's had so far? Well, uh, Team A started back in 1991 with. Um, 22 football players mentoring uh, some 7th and 8th grade boys in Lincoln and uh, we felt it worked very well so we expanded the program. So today we're mentoring between 7,500 and 8,000 kids in uh, 130 communities all across Nebraska. Here in Greater Omaha right around 1,500, 1,600. But the, uh, and that's the good news but the bad news is we always have about a third more kids who want to mentor than we have mentors. And um, nobody's in teammates because they're forced to do it. So the young person says, I want to mentor. The parents say, I want to mentor. And uh, so we spend an awful lot of time recruiting mentors. And that's part of what we're doing here tonight at the uh, mattress factory. And we've had pretty good data. We've studied our matches for five years with Gallup and um, found that attendance, schoolwork, uh, um, Going on to college improves significantly. Um, uh, Antisocial behavior, substance abuse, teenage pregnancy goes down. And then we found that kids are also much more hopeful, more hopeful about the future, more optimistic. And uh, so that's a huge thing. And so it does work. And um, so we're working hard at it right now. I have to ask you about one of your former players, uh, Lawrence Phillips. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, how you learned the news yesterday and what was your reaction about well, that? Well, the first I heard about Lawrence was uh, a reporter calling me and telling me about noon yesterday. And I was very sorry because I had stayed in touch with him. I, I wrote to him about every couple of months and his letters were always pretty positive, pretty upbeat. and. Uh, I didn't see anything like this coming. Of course, I wasn't in contact with him every day. And uh, so, uh, very difficult, very talented guy. Not only a great athlete, but he was an intelligent person. I visited him in prison a few years ago, and he said he'd read about 150 books in the past year. And uh, so, he a uh, pretty intellectual guy. And um, so, it's really sad when you see that much talent uh, end up like that and uh, that's one reason why we do what we do because I think if Lawrence had had somebody in his life, a mentor, somebody stable, somebody that cared about him when he was eight or nine years old, uh, quite likely he would have seen a different outcome but uh, he was kind of on his own, he was on the streets when he was a very young guy and then he got put in a group home not because of criminal activity because they didn't have any place else to put him. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a survival of the fittest in those group homes. So he was tough and he had, to, he had to figure out a way to make it work. But in the process, I think he had some scars that were pretty hard to overcome. Yeah, uh, it, when you were creating teammates, did you have maybe Lawrence Phillips in mind as, you know, these are the kind of, you know, mm -hmm. if, if team, teammates was around when he was a kid, you know, eight years old mm -hmm. or whatever, that could have helped him, you know. Well, of course, in 1991, when we started Teammates, I did not know Lawrence Phillips. But the reason we started Teammates was because I had been coaching since 1962. And in 1962, the world was much different than it was in the late 90s. Uh, saw the advent of the drug culture. Saw a lot of the media stuff, uh, video games, some of the television, internet, a little bit more harmful. And you saw the breakdown in the family. You know, today, over half of our young people are growing up without their biological parents. 20, 25 million fatherless kids. And, uh, and so I was dealing, uh, in coaching, I was dealing uh, much more with baggage, personal baggage, than X's and O's. Whereas back in the 60s, you focused on practice schedules and plays and X's and O's. And the, uh, the personal problems were not near so great. So that's one reason why we started Teammates. And, um, and I think probably, if anything, it's more important today than it was even in 1991. So that's why we do what we do. What were those letters like back and forth with uh, Lawrence Phillips? And, and when was the last time you uh, wrote him a letter? Or you I wrote him a letter right before Christmas because I knew being in prison uh, at Christmas time had to be hard. And so I just told him and thinking about him and hoped he was doing okay. And 
The last letter I got from him was in November, uh, right before the 1995 player reunion, because I had written to him and said, if there's anything you want me to tell the guys, I'd be glad to pass it on. He said, no, I said, uh, you know, that's got to be a happy time, a, a time for celebration. And I don't want to cast a pall on that. And uh, so it's better they don't hear from me. And uh, so that was the last, last letter I got from him. And, but um, we stayed in touch over the, over the years. And the thing about it that I'm, I'm grateful for is that I, I know Lawrence didn't feel like anybody abandoned him, that George Darlington recruited him, George stayed in touch with him, I stayed in touch with him. Uh, one of our trainers stayed in touch with him. And uh, so even though at times he didn't do what he should have done, uh, I don't think he ever felt that uh, we gave up on him totally. And so um, for better or for worse, uh, it is what it is. And we, uh, we cared about him. Mm -hmm. And you said those letters were pretty positive, so you didn't really see this coming at all for uh, Lawrence? No, I didn't, because uh, usually he would talk about the football team in the fall and, and how they were doing, and he talked a little bit about the college football playoff selection committee and some of the teams. Uh, I think he got to watch a little bit of TV, and so he kind of stayed up with that. And, and then they, he couldn't really talk about his uh, legal case, or his, he, uh, but he was always fairly positive that somehow he was going to be okay. And uh, his letters were monitored, so uh, I know that he was not free to say whatever he wanted to. And sometimes the letters came rather slowly because uh, you didn't get a letter back in a week. It sometimes was a month or so. Okay. Looking back, uh, I think in the 95 season uh, when he was uh, accused of a lot of things. Uh, do you feel like you could have done anything as, as the coach and maybe mentor back then or or uh, anything differently than that? Well, what we did is we knew that the one thing that, uh, the one constant, the one organizing factor in his life was football. And I could have kicked him off the team. We had good running backs, but I knew he'd go back on the street, go back to Los Angeles with the group home. And uh, so I told him that we were kicking him off but he could earn his way back if he went to counseling, went to class, uh, did, did well academically, took him down to the manager clinic and had him thoroughly evaluated psychologically and they didn't see anything major wrong. And uh, I knew he wouldn't do those things if there wasn't a possibility of football. And uh, so I thought at the end of his career at Nebraska that he was in pretty good shape. I thought the counseling had helped. I thought he understood some of his difficulties. And I told his agent that it was absolutely important and critical that he stay in counseling. And the uh, agent said, yeah, that would be something they would make sure of. Uh, I don't think that happened. And uh, some of his old friends and some of the things, some of the past influences, I think, impacted him. And uh, I don't think he was ever quite able to overcome his past. And uh, so, it's like calling a football play. You do the best you can. You, you do what you think is right. And uh, sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. But uh, I thought the process was probably sound. And we thought it was in his best interest. And uh, we're just really sorry that it didn't work out better. And, and uh, how important was it for you to keep in contact with him all these years gone by? Mm -hmm. Well. I stay in touch with a lot of players, and uh, anybody who's got difficulty, having some hard times, uh, we want to make sure they understand that we don't just cast them aside because their football career is over, that they're part of the deal, they're part of the program, and they're important to us. And uh, so I stay in touch with a lot of players, and uh, Lawrence was one of them. And uh, so. I, uh, I, as I said, I, I'm grateful for the fact that I, I know Lawrence didn't feel that we ever abandoned him. No matter what his circumstances, uh, we still cared about him. And I think that was important. Right. And then there's a couple.